Hello viewers, welcome to this session. Today we will learn about Old Man and the Sea, the work written by Ernst Hemingway. It is a part of American literature. In this session, we would understand how a novel is presented. We will also see what Hemingway's style and writing are. We would look into the various themes and also appreciate its language and style. We would finally evaluate its relevance in the present times. Ernst Hemingway, a well-known American writer, was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1954 for his most celebrated work, The Old Man and the Sea. It was towards the end of career, his, that Hemingway started working on novels about the sea. The result was The Old Man and the Sea, and it proved to be an instantaneous success and acclaimed as the best piece he had ever done. The short fiction is a story of a man's struggle against the world of nature. The novel talks about the noble courage and endurance of the Cuban fisherman. It is a story of an old man, a young boy and a giant fish. The theme, the old man and the sea is almost unanimously regarded as a triumph. It concerns an old Cuban fisher. After 84 days without catching a single fish, Santiago ventures far into the sea alone and hooks a giant marlin in the Gulf Stream. For two days and two nights, the old man holds on to it while he is towed farther into the sea. Finally, he brings the fish alone side, harpoons it and lashes it to his skiff. Almost at once, the sharks begin to attack the dead fish for its flesh. He fights the sharks, kills many of them and he is eventually left with his broken tiller as his only weapon. The sharks eat all the flesh of the marlin, leaving alone the skeleton. Santiago returns to the shore with the skeleton half dead with fatigue, makes his way to his hut to sleep and dream of better days. Hemingway was born in Illinois in 1899 to an eminent physician Clarence Edmonds Hemingway and Grace Hall Hemingway. He had a sound knowledge of the Holy Bible and English classics. He wanted to join the army but was rejected due to his poor eyesight. The disillusionment of the war lived with him all his life and caused his faith to decline. His works had great success in his lifetime, but unfortunately he committed suicide at the end of his life. He started his career as a reporter for the Kansas City Star, but later moved to join as a defense ambulance driver. After the war, he resumed writing, publishing his short stories and novels at regular intervals. His first successful novel was The Sun Also Rises, which talks of a moral group, expatriated Americans and Englishmen broken by the war who turn to escape through all possible diversions. A Farewell to Arms is another successful novel that gave him long break in his career. For Whom the Bell Tolls and Across the River and Into the Trees are three more well-known novels that deal with the war and the theme of loss. His collection of short stories, Men Without Women and Winners Take Nothing are some of his 
best short fiction of his age. Towards the end of his career, Hemingway started working on novels about the sea and the result was The Old Man and the Sea. With his varied experiences in life, the war and battlefields, slums, police stations and the jungles of Africa, his vision of life was one that focused on the dark, seamy side of existence. Life for him was an arena of struggle and man had to endure and fight. His heroes are men of courage. Hemingway sees courage as grace under pressure. He writes of death, violence, love and endurance like boxing, bullfighting, fishing or battling. Short fiction is a narrative designed to give a single dominant effect by concentrating on a single dramatic situation. The modern short fiction credited to American practitioners of the art such as Washington Irving, Nathaniel Hawthorne and Edgar Allan Poe and later writers such as O. Henry and Hemingway further enriched the tradition. Hemingway made a significant contribution to the short fiction in America. Hemingway's world view was conditioned by his experiences of war. He wrote in an atmosphere of violence and hostility. The journalistic styles he had perfected in the course of his war reporting brought a new note in the tradition of American short fiction. Written in 1951 and published in 1952, The Old Man and the Sea is Hemingway's final work published during his lifetime. The novel received the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1954. The Old Man and the Sea served to strengthen Hemingway's literary reputation and prompted a re-examination of his entire body of work. The novel was initially received with much popularity. It restored many readers' confidence in Hemingway's capability as an author and many critics favorably compared it with such works as William Faulkner's The Bear, Herman Melville's Moby Dick, Eyes the Same Color of the Sea, Santiago's Expatriation from Spain and Ethnic Otherness in Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea focuses on the old man's national identity. Using baseball references, it points out that Santiago was at least 22 years old when he moved from Spain to Cuba. Born in Spain's Canary Islands, Santiago moved to Cuba as a young man. The circumstance has a significant impact on his social condition. Santiago was old enough to have a Spanish identity when he immigrated. Being a foreigner and from being a country that colonized Cuba would influence his life on the island. Because Santiago was too poor to move back to Spain, many Spaniards moved to Cuba and then back to Spain at that time, so he adopted Cuban culture like religious ceremonies, Cuban Spanish and fishing in scuffs in order to acculturate in the new country. The dangerous hunt for the marlin was an effort to earn a place in the new community, something he had run away from.
The main characters of the work are the old man Santiago, a Cuban fisherman, the young boy Manolin, and the great Marlin. The old man and the young boy are Santiago and Manolin respectively. The entire plot of the novel revolves round these two characters. The Marlin symbolizes the old man's ideal opponent. He is a thing of grace and honor and he never backs down from the challenge or attempting to rid himself of the hook until he is physically exhausted. Santiago loves the Marlin and holds him in complete respect considering that the Marlin has brought out his own best qualities in the fight between them. The novel tells us about Santiago, a Cuban fisherman who after 84 luckless days has roved off his scuff in the Gulf Stream adjoining Cuba in quest of big catch. He was earlier accompanied by the boy Manolin with whom before venturing out he talks of better days and about the lions on the beach which he always dreams of and about the great sport of baseball. Soon he loses his boy companion on account of his family's decision. The boy's father believes that the old man has lost his luck and so moves the boy to another ship. Other fishermen referred to him as Salau, which means very unlucky, a slang expression in Portuguese. Santiago's house is very simple shack with a bed, table and chair on the dirt floor. There are also religious pictures and a tinted photograph on the wall. Relics of his wife too. Wall of Santiago's wife had been taken down since it made him too lonely to look at it. Simplicity of Santiago's house further develops our view of Santiago as materially unsuccessful. It is interesting that Hemingway draws attention to the relics of Santiago's wife in his house presenting an aspect of Santiago which is otherwise absent throughout the novel. This is significant because it suggests certain completeness to Santiago's character. Aged and alone but determined he goes far out into the sea and hooks a great marlin fish that pulls his boat the whole afternoon and into the next day. Santiago summons all his strengths and skill against the marlin. As the second night turns to dawn, the marlin finally surfaces and Santiago harpoons and kills him. Then he ties him onto the side of the boat, but he does not fit in the scuff. The old man lashes through his small boat and makes his way back home very tired. As he sails slowly towards the shore, sharks smell the blood and attack his catch and he fights them as best as he can with a knife attached to the tiller. He manages to kill many sharks, but they continue to attack the marlin and gradually eat the marlin's flesh within 10 minutes. He thought much and he kept on thinking about sin. You did not kill the fish only to keep alive and to sell for food, he thought. You killed him for pride and because you are a fisherman. You loved him when he was alive 
and you loved him after. If you love him, it's not a sin to kill him. Santiago finally reaches the shore and leaves his boat on the beach along with the big skeleton of the marlin. The old man goes into his hut and sleeps. The boy is the only one who marvels at his catch while Santiago dreams of his past experiences of his hand wrestling contest with the negro from Cien figures. He emulates the great Dimaggio who plays like a champion despite the pain of a bone spur. In this context, we can understand Santiago's statement, a man can be destroyed but not defeated. The theme line of the novel is what a man can do and what a man can endure. The book ends with other fishermen, the boy and ignorant tourists admiring the remains of the giant fish while the exhausted man sleeps and dreams of the past. A group of fishermen gather the next day around the boat where the fish skeleton is still attached. One of the fishermen measures it to be 18 feet from nose to tail. Tourists at the nearby cafe mistakenly take it for a shark. Manolin, worried about the old man's endeavor, cries upon finding him safe asleep. The boy brings him newspapers and coffee. When the old man wakes, they promise to fish together once again. Upon his return to sleep, Santiago dreams of his youth, of lions on an African beach. The old man feels very unwell and also coughs up blood a few times towards the end of the story. He does not tell the boy. The novel is a representation of life as a struggle against unconquerable natural forces in which a kind of victory is possible. It is an epic metaphor for lives, a contest in which even the problem of right and wrong seems trivial before the great thing that is the struggle. It is like a Greek tragedy in that as the hero falls and fails, the audience gets a memorable glimpse of what stretcher a man may attain. And it is a Christian tragedy as well in several marked allusions to Christian symbolism, particularly the crucifixion. This work symbolizes man's struggle against the natural world. It also signifies man's capacity to exhibit great courage and endurance in the face of difficulties. It is also story of friendship between a young boy and an aging fisherman tormented by hunger and weeks of ill luck. Santiago, a once strong proud man, is coming to terms with his failing abilities and age. Given the depth of Santiago's tragedy, most likely Santiago will never have the opportunity to catch another such fish in his lifetime. The old man and the sea ends on a rather optimistic note. Santiago is reunited with Manolin, who desperately wants to complete his training. All of the old man's noble qualities and more important the lessons he draws from his experience will be passed on to the boy which means that the fisherman's life will continue on in some form 
even after his death. The promise of triumph and regeneration is supported by the closing image of the book. Although the novel has not been divided into chapters superficially, the progression of the plot reveals Hemingway's mastery in drifting from one scene to the other in sheer intellectual depth and variety. The description of the writer about the happenings of each day brings to a close the writer's authority in authorship. The structure of the old man and the sea is apparently simple but actually intricately designed. Most critics agree that the theme of this book is man's capacity to withstand and surpass hardships of time and circumstances. The idea is conveyed through Santiago's adventures with the marlin and the sharks. He gives a clear picture and description of Santiago's physical struggle, fatigue, solitude, old age and courageous response, evocation of both physical energy and imaginative vision to encounter the outside forces. Hemingway presents the action not in abstract terms, gain and loss, strength and weakness, youth and age, but in vivid images such as the marlin and the shark, the right hand and the left hand, Manolin and Santiago. The old man and the sea has been described as a parable of inner strength and courage. It is written in a long stretch of narrative with no chapter divisions. It has also been described as a drama in three acts. Now the theme of the novel. The order in struggle, defeat and death. From the very first beginning, Santiago is characterized as someone struggling against defeat. He has gone 84 days without catching a fish. He will soon pass his own record of 87 days. But the old man refuses defeat at every turn. He resolves to sail out beyond the other fishermen to where the biggest fish promised to be. He lands the marlin, tiling his record of 87 days after a brutal three-day fight and he continues to ward off sharks from stealing his prey even though he knows the battle is useless. The novella is more accurately the story of man's place within nature. Santiago lives according to his own observation. Man is not made for defeat. A man can be destroyed but not defeated. In Hemingway's portrait of the world, death is inevitable. But the best men and animals will nonetheless refuse to give in to its power. Accordingly, man and fish will struggle to the death, just as hungry sharks will lay waste to an old man's trophy catch. One might characterize equation as the working out of the statement, because I love you, I have to kill you. Alternately, one might draw a parallel to the poet John Keats and his insistence that beauty can only be comprehended in the moment before death as beauty bows to destruction. Santiago, though destroyed at the end of novella, is never defeated. 
Instead, he emerges as a hero. Santiago's struggle does not enable him to change man's place in the world. Rather, it enables him to meet his most dignified destiny. Many parallels exist between Santiago and the classic heroes of the ancient world. In spite of exhibiting terrific strength, bravery and moral certainty, those heroes usually possess a quality that leads to their eventual downfall though the quality is admirable. If pride is Santiago's fatal flaw, he is keenly aware of it. After sharks have destroyed the marlin, the old man apologizes again and again to his worthy opponent. He has ruined them both by sailing beyond the usual boundaries of fishermen. Indeed, his last word on the subject comes when he asks himself the reason for his undoing and decides, nothing, I went out too far. Hemingway does not condemn his protagonist for being full of pride. On the contrary, Santiago stands as proof that pride motivates men to greatness. Hemingway seems to suggest that victory is not a prerequisite for honor. Instead, glory depends on one having the pride to see the struggle through to its end, whatever be the outcome. Now about the motives. Crucifixion imagery is the most noticeable way in which Hemingway creates the symbolic parallel between Santiago and Christ. When Santiago's palms are first cut by his fishing line, the reader cannot help but think of Christ suffering his stigmata. Later, when the sharks arrive, Hemingway portrays the old man as a crucified martyr, saying that he makes a noise similar to that of a man having nails driven through his hands. Furthermore, the image of the old man struggling up the hill with his mask across his shoulders recalls Christ's march toward Calvary. Hemingway employs these images in the final pages of the novella in order to link Santiago to Christ, who exemplified transcendence by turning loss into gain, defeat into triumph, and even death into renewed life. Santiago dreams his pleasant dream of the lions at play on the beaches of Africa three times. The first time is the night before he departs on his three-day fishing expedition. The second occurs when he sleeps on the boat for a few hours in the middle of his struggle with the marlin. And the third takes place at the very end of the book. In fact, the sober promise of the triumph and regeneration with which the novella closes is supported by the final image of the lions. Because Santiago associates the lions with his youth, the dream suggests the circular nature of life. Additionally, because Santiago imagines the lions, fears predators, playing his dream suggests a harmony between the opposing forces, life and death, love and hate, destruction and regeneration of nature. I hope you all have enjoyed the part 1 of The Old Man and the Sea. We shall have the continuation of part 2 in our next class. Thank you.